Coffee with Corey, brewed in part by Kroger. And it's Tuesday. We've had everything. We've had yeah. the music. We've had a Jam and all great long. recipe. Good recipes. Ooh. I mean, it's just like, and then I have to follow all of that. <laughs> but we're going to get straight to it. So okay. for starters, good morning, everyone, and happy Tuesday. We are starting off with a safety warning. Check your fridge for a popular produce item. We are talking carrots this time. Well, this is a big recall. Uh, most of you can say that you probably have some form of carrots in your refrigerator right now. Well, this specific E. coli outbreak is among organic carrots. So according to the CDC, E. coli was found on organic carrots sold at major retailers like Whole Foods, Trader Joe's and Target. How about that? Well, the cases spread across 18 states with cases in Arkansas, but none reported yet in Tennessee or Mississippi. California-based Grimway Farms issued a voluntary recall for carrots with Best Buy date from September 11th through November 12th. They shouldn't be any uh, left on any store shelves, but of course it could still be in home refrigerators. So please be mindful about that. The concern over carrots comes, of course, less than a month after McDonald's removed its quarter pounder from the menu at uh, some of their locations when fresh slivered onions were linked to E. coli contamination. Well, experts say foodborne illnesses are on the rise with more than 40% increase since 2013. How about that? So I wonder what goes into that increase. Is it like lack of, um, I don't know, like checking the places that everything's being made? Is it checking like the equipment? Like why is there an increase? There must be some sort of lack in yeah, I mean, it Checking seems like stuff. after the after the pandemic, um, staffing was an issue, yeah. Ooh, yeah. supply chain an issue. I feel like all these factors will play mm -hmm. into just how a facility is run, and it can just there there are these missing yeah. things, and then the great resignation. So like everybody left, you know. It's yeah, like, so it's just like ah, <laughs> yeah. And they have to, I don't like, know. Retrain everybody. Just to, you know, I love carrots, so <laughs> this was. Like, I don't. I, oh, you don't like carrots? I'm, I only like carrot souffle, but it's sugary, yeah. so I'm like, oh, you know, I okay. try to stay away. Yeah, but right. I don't know what Lady Doris loves carrots. So. I love carrots. Yeah. So make sure you check refrigerators, <laughs> please. Okay, well, we are now to our next story. The next, uh, with Thanksgiving being next week, many of you will be putting up your Christmas trees and decorations. Well, that includes the Christmas tree at the White House, too. Well, believe it or not, tomorrow, the lucky Christmas tree will be cut down and transported from North Carolina Farm. Well, this year, the tree was selected as a symbol of resilience from the hurricane hit state. Cartner's Christmas Tree Farm is located in Avery County. It was one of the hardest hit counties from Hurricane Helene just a few months ago. Well, the farm experienced road damage and lost nearly 6,000 smaller trees in the mudslide. Thankfully, this year's Christmas tree was more mature and survived. The farm farm's co-owners hopes that this tree can be an inspiring symbol for Western North Carolina. Here in the Western North Carolina, where we've experienced these, this horrific hurricane and flood, uh, they would they would want th this tree to represent the uh, faith and hope and love and joy and family and generosity, all those good things of mankind that we need to stop and recognize. That's what they would want this tree to represent. Well, a 20 foot Fraser fir will be cut down tomorrow, then transported to Washington, where the next big job, of course, would be decorating the tree will take place. Is Decorate yours up? Big tree. It it is not because remember we're going to go cut down that's our right, own that's tree. That's right. Mm -hmm. So we have to wait for the date, which is going to mm -hmm. be like right before Thanksgiving. It will probably be Thanksgiving weekend is when we'll go and we'll go cut down our own Christmas tree and then mm -hmm. transport it back. We're excited about that. I have to, I can't wait. I, I need pictures. I need pictures, okay. And finally, okay, so fans in Dallas were in for a surprise uh, during last night's Monday night football game, as you can remember this, right? So this just happened. Take a look at this. It's a piece of metal fell from the roof just before the game between the Dallas Cowboys and Houston Texans. A Cowboys spokesperson says this all happened while the roof was being opened before the game. Officials say the wind gust up to 30 miles per hour during the day contributed to the incident. No one was hurt, but the roof at AT&T Stadium was closed back up and stayed closed during the game. And get this, the roof has not been opened for a game since 2022 and may not be for the rest of the year until everything gets fixed. Of course, as you may know, the Cowboys fell to the Texans 34 to 10. So that is crazy. And that's very scary, too. You want to make sure that everything is um, properly secured and all that stuff. Um, that's a little scary, though. Yes, be safe. Be safe. <laughs> be safe. All right, Corey, see you tomorrow. Yeah, see you tomorrow. All right, we'll be right back.